In this lecture of uh, organic chemistry videos, we will learn about electrophilic addition reactions of alkenes. Alkenes can be generally represented by this general structure. Remember, alkenes contain a carbon carbon double bond. Alkenes can react with reagents of this general type, AB, for example. AB is a general representation of a reagent here yeah, that can add to alkene. So this reaction between the alkene and the AB reagent can lead to this addition product of this general representation where a atom, if you like, of the AB reagent adds to one of the carbon atoms of the carbon-carbon double bond and B of the reagent adds to the other carbon of the carbon-carbon double bond in this reaction and as, it, as the case in electrophilic addition reactions of alkenes alkenes behave as nucleophiles alkenes behave as nucleophiles because they contain a carbon-carbon double bond which consists of a carbon-carbon high bond. So there is electron density in the carbon-carbon double bond, which gives, if you like, alkenes this nucleophilic character. So therefore, alkenes behave as nucleophiles. This is a general structure of an electrophilic reagent. So therefore, this reaction is described as electrophilic addition. The electrophile adds to the carbon-carbon double bond in that key. So that's why the reaction is described as electrophilic addition reaction. So this is a general representation. Now we will take examples and we begin with uh, addition of HX. Addition of a halogen acid. X is a halogen, so HX could be it could be HCl, it could be HBr, and again, we can um, uh, think of this reaction with the knowledge that we acquired and we had before, based on the general representation. So one H, one H, so if you like the hydrogen atom of HX will bond with one carbon of the carbon-carbon double bond, and X will bond to the other carbon. So let's take a simple alkene, ethylene. If we take ethylene, this is ethylene, the simplest alkene possible where there is, of course, uh, a carbon-carbon double bond between the two carbon atoms in ethylene. So ethylene, if we react it with, say, HCl, you would expect the hydrogen atom of, of, CL, of HCl will bond with one of the um, uh, carbon atoms and the carbon-carbon double bond, and CN will bond with the without the carbon atom. So the pi bond is broken, obviously, yeah? Okay, so this should be the, the product. If we bond the hydrogen of HCN with, the, with this carbon, then we get CH, CH3 on this side, and the, the CN will bond with the other carbon atom like that. So this is the addition product of the reaction of ethylene with HCl. But if you look at ethylene, you will notice that the two carbon atoms have the same number of hydrogens. The two carbon atoms in ethylene have the same number of hydrogen atoms. It is a symmetrical alkene, so therefore it doesn't really matter where H bonds to which carbon atom. So if the, if the, if the hydrogen bonds to the left carbon, carbon, if you like, or the right carbon, it doesn't really matter. Okay, that's because both carbons have the same number of hydrogen atoms. What if we take now an example of an alkene that has different number of hydrogen atoms of the carbons of the carbon-carbon double bond, like what? Like proline, for example. Yeah? So let's take now proline, and this is proline represented by a uh, skeletal representation. We take proline and now we add HCl to it. And again, 
this is a halogen acid, so X could be ZF, it could be BR. And in this reaction, it does matter where H bonds go. Yeah? So if you, if you look at the probine, and if we number them following high rules, this would be carbon 1, that's carbon 2, and this is carbon 3. So where will hydrogen bond to, or which carbon of the carbon carbon uh, double bond bonds to hydrogen, and or which carbon bonds to chlorine? So here it does matter, by the way. Unlike that symbol and key, okay, and the product that is obtained is only this, which means hydrogen of HCl bonds to carbon one and Cl bonds to carbon two, and this is the only product obtained. This is the uh, only product obtained. The other isomer, it would be described as regioisomer, regioisomer, which means a structure, of course, of the same formula, but that's different from another one based on the region, if you like. So the region of the location where the atoms of the reagents are now different. Yeah. So the other reagent, where, which is, or the other regioisomer, if you like, where hydrogen would bond to carbon two, and Cl would bond to carbon one, that region isomer will not be produced. And there is, of course, a very important um, reason and explanation for this. So this is the only product uh, produced, or if you like, the only region isomer. So the only region isomer uh, produced, the other region isomer will not be produced. And the reason is, um, the stability of the intermediates involved in this reaction. So we will now take a mechanism for this reaction in order to see the ra a rationale, if you like, or, or an explanation as to why the reaction behaves or takes place as, 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 as drawn. In other words, why does the hydrogen of HCl bonds to carbon 1 and Cl bonds to carbon 2? But before we go on to the mechanism, we have to mentioned that this is an observation that is made by a great uh, Russian chemist, a great Russian uh, scientist, Mark Kopnikov. And this is like, this, this, this observation is termed as Mark Kopnikov's rule. So we should, we should write that down as well. So the Mark Kopnikov's rule, Uh, says basically in electrophilic addition reactions of alkenes with HX, H of HX bonds to carbon with more hydrogens or less alkyl substituents. And X of HX bonds to carbon with less hydrogens or more alkyl substituents. So in this reaction, H of HX, this is very um, symbol uh, uh, representation, if you like, of the Markovnikov rule, H of HX bonds to, to carbon with less, sorry, with more, with more hydrogen, so H of HX bonds to carbon, of course, of the carbon, carbon double bond of alkene, with more hydrogens, and X of HX, so this X come, comes from the halogen acid, X of HX bonds to carbon, uh, of the carbon-carbon double bond that has less hydrogen. So carbon, uh, X bonds to carbon of the carbon-carbon double bond with now less hydrogens. You could say more hydrogens here or less, less R, if you like, or less alkyl groups. And here, less hydrogens or more alkyl groups. Yeah, so depending on which way you look at it, but they mean basically the same thing. This is Markovnikov's rule, and again, an observation made by, 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 by Markovnikov that upon addition of HX to alkenes, H of HX bonds to carbon with more hydrogens, and X bonds to carbon 
with less hydrogen. So an example of this is the reaction of chlorine with HCl. But this observation obviously is not random, or, or if you like, this observation uh, has an explanation or a rationale. Or if you like, the, the fact that H of HCl and that reaction of chlorine with, with HCl, that H bonds a carbon 1 and Cl bonds a carbon 2, okay, this has an explanation. It's not random. So the way to explain this is to look at the details of the reaction. Yeah, how does this reaction takes place? And to do this, we need to think of a, a possible mechanism for this reaction. So let, let's, let's do that. Okay? So if we, if we consider now a mechanism for the, for the reaction, here is the, the starting alkene, for b and here we have HCl. And the first step when these two reactants meet is breakage of the carbon carbon high bond. Breakage of the carbon carbon high bond. Release of two electrons. So two electrons are released as a result of that carbon carbon high bond breakage. The two electrons released are used to make a bond between one of the two carbon 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 uh, atoms that were bonded by the double bond that's now broken and hydrogen of of HCl and hydrogen of of HCl. So let's let's do that using KDLs. Remember to indicate that a, a bond is being broken. The arrow must originate. The arrow must originate from the middle of that bone. So where is now this arrow going? So this arrow indicates breakage of this carbon-carbon pi bone, and this arrow is now go, now should arrive on hydrogen to indicate formation of a bone between carbon and hydrogen. But according to uh, uh, valency rules, the dual rule for hydrogen, hydrogen cannot make more than two bonds. Hydrogen cannot be surrounded by more than two electrons, which means this hydrogen chlorine bond must be broken at the same time. So as this carbon-carbon double bond is broken, specifically the carbon-carbon pi bond is broken, a new carbon hydrogen bond is formed, and simultaneously a hydrogen chlorine bond is broken. So, what is the result of this uh, mechanistic step? This is actually very crucial, yeah, because as this electron movement is shown using these scale arrows, a big question would be which of the two carbon atoms? When Markovnikov says, or according to Markovnikov's rule, hydrogen will bond to carbon one, so this hydrogen will bond to that carbon. So if that's the case, then the other carbon, so this is, there were two hydrogens here, right? Now there are three, because the other one comes after this step, yeah? What about that carbon? That carbon had a double bond with the other carbon, yeah? So when this pi bond is broken, this carbon would have lost its electron share. So instead of having eight electrons around it, now that carbon would have six electrons only, and that's the reason why this carbon must now carry a positive charge. This is a positive carbon atom in this intermediate, and this type of intermediate is a cation generally, because it's positively charged. And the positive charge is on carbon, and that's why this intermediate is described as carbocation, a carbocation, carbo from carbon, Time to indicate that the intermediate is positively charged. So this is a carbocation intermediate. This is a carbocation intermediate. And with the carbocation, there is, of course, the, the chloride ion uh, uh, that is released as a result of the, uh, the, uh, the first step. So we can show the, the chloride ion like this with now four lone pairs. Before it had three lone pairs, but now two, one more lone pair is released, or two 
blood volume electrons are released as a result of this HCl bond breakage. Now the this Cl atom has three, uh, sorry, four lone pairs. It's a chloride ion. It's a nucleophilic, obviously, and this carbocation intermediate is, of course, electrophilic. This carbon, which is positively charged, is the electrophilic side. So the, we can now use a KLR to indicate bond formation between chlorine and the chlor uh, as provided by the chloride ion and carbon, the positively charged carbon in the in the uh, uh, carbocation intermediate. And of course, all those arrows uh, originate from electron-rich sites to electron-poor sites. So the arrow must go from the chloride ion, where electrons are, would be like the source of electrons, to where electrons are needed, or the electrophilic site in the carbocation intermediate. So this will now give uh, the final product, so this is a, a mechanism for this reaction, but still, this does not explain the Markovnikov rule. This does not explain yet the Markovnikov rule, or others, why does not hydrogen bond to carbon-2? If hydrogen bonds to carbon-2, then we would get an isomeric carbocation, if you like. So an isomeric carbocation, which is hypothetical, would be this one. So where hydrogen, we number these carbons um, again, we have so one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and also here one, two, three. So hydrogen in this uh, formed carbocation bonds to carbon one, and the positive charge would be on carbon two. This is like the opposite, if you like, or an isomeric carbocation, where hydrogen will now bond to carbon-2, and the positive charge will be on carbon-1. This is still, of course, a carbocation. This does not make it any different from the uh, form carbocation. It's only the positive charge now on carbon-1. So hydrogen from coming from Cl now bonds to carbon-2. So these two are isomeric carbocation, but this carbocation is not formed. This carbocation is not formed. Whereas this carbocation is formed, and the reason behind formation of this carbocation and the lack of formation of this carbocation is the relative stability. This carbocation is actually more stable than this carbocation. And if you look at that carbocation, you will see that the positive charge is on carbon-2. And carbon-2 has a group on this side and a group on the other side. So therefore, this carbon, which is positively charged in this carbocation, has two groups on it, yeah, or two groups that are bonded to it. So therefore, it is a secondary carbocation. This is a secondary carbocation. And if you look at this carbocation, you will see that, that this carbon one, which has a positive charge, has only one ethyl group. So basically one group. This is a primary carbocation. So that's a more substituted carbocation. This is a less substituted carbocation. And more substituted carbocations are more stable than less substituted carbocations. And there are one or two reasons behind this, and that's due to inductive effect or electron donation or hyper conjugation as we will, we will show now uh, very shortly. But it's very important to recognize that secondary carbocations are more stable than primary carbocations or in general more substituted carbocations are more stable than less substituted carbocations and this is due to electron donation or hyperconjugation. This carbon of this carbocation intermediate, of course, it has, as you might expect, a p orbital. Yeah. These two carbon atoms have p orbitals, and that's, these are the kinds of orbitals that are used to make the pi bond between carbon one and carbon two. When this pi bond is broken, the two electron from the p orbital on carbon two is gone now. Yeah. So carbon-2 still has a p-orbital, it's only empty. So 
C2 or gamma 2 has an empty p orbital, okay, which can be represented like that. So that's an empty p orbital. This is an empty p orbital. And this empty p orbital is surrounded by two groups. And the two groups are methyl groups, which are electron donating groups by inductive effect. So each of these methyl groups donate electrons to the positively charged uh, carbon. And this kind of donation stabilizes this carbon cation. Okay? This electron donation or inductive effect can also be described or termed as hyperconjugation. So, so there is CH bond here, and there is CH bond here. And each CH bond is formed by overlap of um, uh, SB3 hybrid orbital and West 1S orbital from, from hydrogen. It's a sigma bond, so this is a sigma bond. And this sigma bond can uh, interact or can donate electrons, if you like, to the empty p orbital by inductive effect. And this kind of interactions are actually stabilizing interactions. So it's, this, is, this is a stabilizing interaction between the CH sigma bond and the empty p orbitals. This type of stabilizing interaction is uh, described as hyperconjugation. Hyperconjugation, therefore, is a stabilizing interaction between uh, an empty p orbital on a positive carbon and a nearby CH sigma bond. So this is CH sigma bond, this is the empty p orbital, and this type of interaction is hyperconjugation. So hyperconjugation again is a stabilizing interaction between the CH sigma bond and on, on one carbon and a nearby, nearby empty p orbital on, on a, 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 a nearby carbon. And the more of these stabilizing interactions, remember these, this is a stabilizing interaction. The more of these stabilizing interactions in a carbocation there are, the more stable the carbocation will be. So there is one hyperconjugation here. And also here, by the way, if you, if you look carefully, there's another, there should be another hyperconjugation and a stabilizing interaction between this CH, CH sigma bond and the MTP orbital. So there are two hyperconjugation here, hyperconjugations here in this secondary carbocation. Okay, which makes it more stable than that primary carbocation, which should have only one type of hyperconjugation. If you look at this carbocation, of course, this is the um, this is the p orbital, and you can show a CH sigma bond like this. And again, this is a sigma bond which is um, formed by overlap of this sb3 hybridized carbon and the one s orbital from from this um, hydrogen, and there, there should be a stabilizing interaction here between this CH sigma bond on, on carbon two and the MTP orbital on carbon one. So remember again, this is the empty uh, P orbital, and this is the CH, CH sigma, and this side of interaction again is hyperconjugation, but there is only one hyperconjugation in this case, because this carbon is only bonded to one group, unlike the secondary carbocation, where the positive carbon has, has two groups bonded to it. This is a less substituted carbocation, okay? This is a less substituted carbocation, and therefore it is less stable. So less substituted carbocations are less stable than more substituted carbocations, and this is due to uh, inductive effect in general, um, uh, due to hyperconjugation. You can also uh, think of it as electron donation, and this is actually a rationale or an explanation of the Markovnikov theorem. So that observation made by Markovnikov can be explained by carbocation stability, which is which is explained in terms of hyperconjugation. So this is the reason behind the regiochemistry observed in this reaction. 
why does hydrogen bonds to carbon with more hydrogens and X bonds to carbon with less hydrogens, which is basically what the company comes to? The answer is carbon cation stability. Let's now take uh, another example of the electrophilic addition reactions to uh, ketene, specifically an example of an addition of HX to an alkene in continuation of the, uh, the explanation of the Markovnikov's rule by carbocation stability. So if we take this alkene now, and as you notice, the two carbon atoms of the uh, carbon carbon double bond are not the same, which means they have different number of, of hydrogen atoms. If we add HCl to this alkene and following Markovnikov's rule, hydrogen should bond to the carbon with more hydrogens or less alkyl substituents, and Cl should bond to carbon with less hydrogens or more alkyl substituents, and therefore H should bond to carbon 1. Hydrogen should bond to carbon 1 of this alkene, and Cl should bond to carbon 2. That's following Markovnikov's rule. So this should be the, the white product. So this is the electrophilic addition product following the uh, Markovnikov's rule. But as we did earlier, or a while ago, that um, Markovnikov's rule is explained in terms of carbocation stability, which is rationalized, if you like, by, by hyperconjugation. So in other words, why does, again, the, the question holds, why does hydrogen of HCl bond to carbon 1, but not carbon 2? Okay, so let's draw a, a mechanism for this type of, of reaction. So this is HCl. And as we uh, uh, did a while ago, the carbon-carbon pi bond is broken, two electrons are released. These two electrons are used to make a bond between one of these two carbon atoms that were doubly bonded and H of HCl. So we move the carbon car the anion from the middle of the carbon carbon double bond to H, and at the same time, uh, the HCl bond is broken. So when this happens, then uh, a carbocation is formed because one carbon will bond with hydrogen of HCl, and the other carbon will then be short of electrons. It would have lost its electron share, and therefore it should carry a positive. Charge. So this should be, therefore, the, the, um, the carbocation that is obtained in this case. This is the carbocation that is formed where, the, where carbon-1 bonds to hydrogen coming from HCl and carbon-2 carries the positive charge. The chloride ion, which is also present um, here, will then attack this electrophilic carbocation intermediate at the electrophilic side, which is the uh, positively charged um, uh, carbon. So the nucleophile attacks the electrophilic side, giving us or giving rise to the um, uh, correct regioisomer that is formed. But the other regioisomer is not full. So this is the only Regio isomer forms. The other regio isomer is not formed. So what, where, what is the other regio isomer? The other regio isomer basically is the, 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 the product or the, the structure where H is bonds to, uh, to carbon 2 and Cl bonds to, to carbon 1. So basically this, this is the other regio isomer that is not, not produced. Yeah. Okay. This regioisomer is not formed, so this is not formed, and th this is following again Markovnikov's rule. And the reason why is this not formed? That's because of the instability of the corresponding carbocation. The carbocation that that should lead to the formation of this product is not stable, and that carbocation that should lead to the formation of of uh, this product is, is this carbocation. So we can show it here. 
this carbocation should lead, so let's, let's uh, label them as carbocations. This is a carbocation. This is obviously the uh, original carbocation, the carbocation that is formed. This carbocation obviously is not formed. Okay, because if, it, if, if this carbocation is formed, this product will definitely be formed. Because the next step, which is the nucleophilic attack by the, by the chloride ion, will definitely uh, happen or occur if the carbocation falls. But this carbocation does not fall. If you look at the structure of this carbocation, you will notice that it is a, a primary carbocation. This is a primary carbocation, whereas the carbocation that's formed is actually their shape. This carbon, this carbon, that has the positive charge has one, two, three alkyl groups that are bonded to it. So therefore, this is a tertiary carbocation. And we learned before that more substituted carbocations are more stable than less substituted carbocations. And this is because of uh, the conductive effect, because of the electrolyzation, or if you like, because of hybrid conjugation. So as you might expect, there should be three hyperconjugations here. Hyperconjugations, again, as we saw a while ago, are stabilizing interactions between the empty p orbital on this carbon and a nearby CH sigma point. And there should be three of them in this case, whereas in that case, there should be only one. So there should be one, one hyperconjugation in that case, but three hyperconjugations here. So therefore, this hyperconjugate, this uh, carbocation should be uh, more, more stable. This is more stable because it's more substituted, and if it is more substituted, it will have more hyperconjugations, which are stabilizing interactions. This uh, carbocation, on the other hand, has only one hyperconjugation. This has only one hyperconjugation. This is uh, uh, less substituted and therefore it is less less stable and we showed um, uh, hyperconjugation uh, in pictures in drawings, in drawings if you like uh, a while ago so to conclude uh, uh, what we learned okay from this uh, example is that um, tertiary carbocations are more stable than primary carbocations and uh, yet again, the uh, reason is hyperconjugation. Again, confirmation of the, of the observation that's made by Markov group or Markov group's group.